so um, I, I work in Amadeus and I'm currently actively involved in the Eona X mobility data space and as well in the Gaia X DSBC animation to support Jean-Francois Cazès and Sébastien Schlosser who initiated these working groups. So for most of us, I must say that data space is a relatively new concept and that it's not so easy to understand how concretely data spaces and data can create value and which business models can be built with this new setup. So we had many discussions on this topic in the DSBC working groups. And I wanted to share with you some illustrations on how data space can create value based on cases we collected from the GAEX DSBC working sessions. From a personal standpoint, as I must say that thanks to GAEX and to this summit, I had the opportunity to meet many experts in very diverse areas. And this is extremely exciting to see so many creativity and dynamism arising from all these groups. So we will go first through cases of mature data space and then uh, go more in detail with the example of the EU Pro Gigant Lighthouse project. At the end, there is a surprise. We will propose you a quiz survey with Slido to ask you to choose the business model which better corresponds to your own data space. It's very simple, don't worry you can collect on slido.com with your smartphone you tap dash gaia x and then you select your choice we come back to this at the very end of this session anyway so um next slide please uh so the the, the purpose of this session is um to um uh, to 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 explain you uh these uh, these various uh, uh, use cases uh, and just to come back on the DSBC uh, to explain what it is, maybe this is not uh, uh, obvious for everyone. It stands for a Data Space Business Committee and it gathers working group organized by vertical domains. So health, energy, agriculture, circular economy, mobility, space, aerospace, smart cities, education, finance, geolocalization and media and others which will come uh, soon. And, other tech and also technical work groups such as finance, governance, compliance, and technical architecture. The purpose of these working groups is very pragmatic and is to share experience, best practices in a given data domain, and to identify very concrete issues that could be a problem to develop data spaces and that should be raised to the GAIA's governance bodies. Each of these data space delivered a position paper which describes the main goals, the challenges, and the use cases. And I have tried to read all these position papers, so it's more than 100 pages in all. And I feel that the first challenge for everyone or all of these data space is really to obtain a good level of data interoperability, a good level of data quality, and a common catalog, which will, for example, faster and easier creation of dashboards to make efficient and relevant decisions. So this is really the first step is the quality of the data and the interoperability. So let's go now to some concrete cases in health, energy, agriculture, mobility, education, industry. So next uh, slide, please. So um, we will start with the health um, uh, cases. Um, well, uh, one of the key aspects of this data space, uh, if I understand the correctly, the position paper is the ability to collect standardized data from several EU countries, and in fact, as much as many as possible EU countries, in order to reach critical mass at EU level to analyze critical credible health patterns. So I met Bert Verdon from Philips who shared with me his view and his experience on value creation in the health area. For him, uh, the health area is a fascinating domain because it touches every one of us. Personal health data are crucial to keep the health system running and to counter the challenges that we see all around us. And we already discussed this uh, earlier in the afternoon. So these data are also extremely personal and sensitive, and they deserve our highest scrutiny regarding security, privacy, and sovereignty. 
That is why GAEX, of course, framework is, is so relevant to the health domain. Let's describe just one example, which was mentioned uh, earlier as well by Mr. Jerome Tass uh, this afternoon. So today, there is a, a number of large data space which exist with genomic data, medical imaging data, with confirmed diagnoses and treatment data. These are extremely useful as a baseline for complex diseases such as cancer and for rare diseases or for newly emerging infectious diseases. So just as an example, there are more than 4,500 different rare diseases identified. 30 million people in Europe live, live with this and only 6% have an, a, a, a treatment available. So how nice it would be uh, for uh, a new patient with strange uh, symptoms and a rare or difficult disease appearance, if we could match their clinical imaging and genomic profile with a combination of all existing databases and find the best possible matches. This would allow us to search for the most similar patient like me, this is the name of the program, within minutes across all the classified known cases across Europe. This could potentially reduce the time to diagnosis, reduce the time to uncertainty for the patient, and improve the selection of the most promising therapy. This could drastically improve the experience for the patient, improve outcomes, and for the business case for demi homes, reduce the costs and burden the health systems. So we had also some uh, uh, working group on the energy with Martin Bourrier, who is the lead of the Omega X, a lighthouse project for the energy data space, uh, which aims to develop cases on renewables, local energy communities, flexibility and electromobility. It has been created to develop important use cases and as well to launch uh, momentum in the energy sector for data spaces and interoperability based on GAIC standards, obviously, and in close coordination as well with previous initiatives such as IDSA, Fireware, BDVA. Its main objectives are to reduce carbon emission and cost of energy transition and renewable energy, but also to improve cooperation and engagement of actors and consumers at local level in energy transition, electromobility, and local flexibilities. Large and small energy companies, providers, academics, and startups are involved in more than 10 European countries. So this is a clear European uh, data space to develop these, uh, these use cases. I, I had also some talks with uh, agriculture data space with uh, Jürgen van Gate, sorry for the pronunciation, Jürgen, uh, from the Flanders Research Institute of Agriculture, Fisheries and Food. ILVO. Um, so at ILVO, with their data sharing platform, which is called Just Connect, they are very interested in the implementation of an agriculture data space based on the GAIS technology and the GAIS ecosystem. Why are they so convinced? Well, they see that, that there are very nice opportunities to create business value through this agriculture data space. They can, for instance, improve internal processes for their farmers as well as for the business around them and for the food processing companies and the retail. As an example, if we bring plant data and soil data together, we can build smart applications and these smart applications allow to put fertilizers, pesticides and herbicides only exactly at the field where they are needed. And this will allow our farmers to save dramatically on inputs. Another example is that if we deliver potatoes to our potatoes processing factories with extra information on quality or on size, uh, these factories will improve their production processes and create value. Another way is that we can, of course, improve the user experience and the sales. If current eco score and nutri score are, uh, that are available on food products could be enhanced, with more objectives and quality data, we could improve the sales of these products. And finally, the data space can add to most of the EU strategies at the moment, such as the farm to fork strategy, for example, 
by reducing the use of pesticides by 50% in 2030. Combining the soil and the crop information to perform smart precision application can save up to 80% on pesticides later on. On average, allowing to do more than 3 billion savings in pesticides costs. So I think that here as well, there is a good uh, uh, business cases. Regarding the mobility domain, we have several groups there. The Aeonaic data space, where I am uh, currently involved, uh, which works with railways, airlines, airports, and tourism players. It aims at improving traveler experience by providing seamless travel tickets, managing multimodal trips with local content, real-time updates in case of disruption, that's very important, and reaccommodation process. This can be do done through data selling between the various players, combining data to improve service to customers, and as well optimizing internal processes, for example, in airports, thanks to data coming from airlines. There are as well extremely interesting use cases in Germany, in Belgium, in Slovenia, which were presented and facilitated uh, in our data space uh, uh, committee, and uh, which facilitate uh, the, the traffic, such as information on slippery road, efficient manage management of traffic congestion, or smart car parking allocation systems. Uh, there are already use cases which are live and very advanced prototypes, uh, so this is very promising. For just to figure out, uh, uh, the EU calculated that really real-time notification of delayed trains can save 20, 27 million working hours, which amounts to 749 million euro in labor costs. I as well met the education uh, data space uh, um, representative with Claudio Simelo and Federica Minichiello. The main topic here is to uh, work on personalized teaching, training and employment strategies, better assessment of what really works and um, to have uh, uh, data uh, based uh, to, to uh, take better decisions. The target is uh, uh, 13 million students in 2026, so this is quite enormous. And they, this data space has, uh, uh, really wants to foster the European competitiveness and to create an ethical and trustworthy framework. Um, so there is a strong momentum in progress, which is based uh, on public and private collaboration. The working group are coordinated currently by the French Ministry of Education, and they succeeded to gather the main French stakeholders, the EdTech associations, more than 400 members, main public op operators, uh, French cloud providers, etc. Um, and the European ambition is at the core of the education skills data space to fulfill the innovative and personalized education guidance services for all the EU citizens. So it's essential to build partnership at European level and to define a common roadmap. The education and skills data space can transform deeply the educational system, have a huge impact on social policies and open a large panel of business opportunities. The key point in terms of added value is a possibility to develop intelligent and personalized services. We do miss today the appropriate framework to provide personalized learning for students, personalized teaching for teachers, and more generally, to give to decision makers, a tech company, etc., the opportunity to better assess what really works. And this is why uh, these, all these uh, use cases are important. Uh, we ex so the data space expect that the new business to business services uh, which will be uh, launched thanks to this data sharing could generate around 32 million euros by 2025. The data space is currently exploring four use cases, artificial intelligence data sets, data sets especially about learning analytics, skills data sharing, digital uh, solution assessment, and all the technical issues that will make this data space work, such as consent and identity management, smart contracts, interoperability, etc. 
to give an example for skis nowadays, there is no single point of entry uh, for citizen skis. Every organization has its own reference system or framework. We may not need one only common framework, but indeed uh, we do need to gather and exchange data between IT systems to really use the information inside raw data. So let's go now in a very interesting example of value creation in the industry, thanks to the EU ProGigant project. Next uh, slide, please. Thank you. Um, so uh, EU ProGigant stands for European Production GigaNet for Calamity Avoiding Self-Orchestration of Value Chain and Learning Ecosystems. This project is carried out by an Austrian and German project consortium led by the Technical University of Wien and the Technical University of Darmstadt. The goal is to build a multi-location digitally networked production ecosystem over five years in nine locations and they will work on seven use cases. There will be vertical and horizontal use of data and application, which will simulate production environments. And that will help to optimize the use of manufacturing machines at a lower cost. So I met Professor Matthias Weigold from the Darmstadt University. And he described uh, one of the very interesting use case, which is called ideal part mat matching. So by sharing data quality on components built by several companies, so uh, two in this example, uh, we can optimize uh, the, the assembly work which is performed by the third company uh, quite significantly. The goal is to identify the ideally matching components to realize the functional assembly requirements. The focus on value adding processes in production reduces the non-value adding task and creates time flexibility potential in cross company value chain. The consequence of this is an increased speed of value creation. The consortium sees potential for a 10% increase in productivity as a result of the reduction in assembly time. There is currently an evaluation of the cost benefit as aspect. The expansion stages of the use case are analyzed with respect to the industry for the zero maturity index, which studies the return on investment. But finally, the most beneficial expansion stage is realized at the industry partners. Next slide, please. So as you can see, there are uh, several ways to create value uh, thanks to data spaces. And we use the OpenDAE principle for data space paper, which has been released in April 21 to uh, uh, classify these ways of creating uh, value. So for in individual players which are, who are part of these data spaces, from an internal perspective, uh, you can create value by improving internal processes um, with a vertical or um, transversal uh, domain, thanks to better uh, uh, quality of data or more accessible uh, data. Uh, from uh, still an individual actor perspective, but for external purposes, uh, you can uh, uh, propose enhanced product to your customer thanks to new data that you were not able to access before uh, and that are now shared uh, and, and unlocked. Um, and so you can increase yourself thanks to this proposed uh, new, uh, new enhanced um, product. You can also sell data uh, as such to other players. This is what we do, for, uh, that we intend to do maybe for, for example, in the mobility data space. You can uh, as well uh, create a data space uh, which uh, will be financed by the fees from members uh, and which will serve to leverage other use cases uh, once the critical mass is uh, re uh, reached. Uh, and you can as well contribute to the EU strategy for a common interest such as uh, carbon neut uh, neutrality, uh, reshoring of production, uh, 
uh, and uh, facilitate and have a better control on the production and the shortage uh, in case of crisis, thanks to um, utilized stronger data management. So the question now is for you. Uh, which of these schemes is the better reflecting the business model of your own data space? Um, and we would like to propose a quiz so we will see if it can work. Um, so you, the proposal is that you select between question one, two, three, four, or five to, ex to, 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 uh, to, to give your, your view on what is uh, the, the most uh, 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 adapted uh, case for, for your own data space. So I don't know, on the technical side, if you can, uh, so I think you can collect on slido.com uh, and you type uh, dash Gaia X, and then you can select the one, two, three, or four, or five choice to, to vote, to, to express your, uh, your own uh, view on this uh, value creation scheme. Um, so I leave the technical uh, team to uh, to monitor this. Well, there are a lot of uh, answers already. So for the time being, it's uh, more internal processes, uh, selling data, and uh, creating a data space. Uh, so well, uh, we have to wait a little bit until everyone has answered. And in the meantime, if there are some questions, maybe I can answer. Well, the, the chart is still moving, but apparently this is uh, the internal processes, which are the most uh, uh, suitable for your data spaces, but the other ones are still moving a little bit. Ask, ask now. So, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Dominique. So, uh, we are receiving a couple of questions and because they're quite steep, uh, we're trying to understand, you know, the order of these questions as we're pushing them forward. Uh, so, my, the first question is, uh, could you give us the open day pa paper uh, references? It's all about the references. Okay, I will, yes. I will send you the, the link uh, uh, to you uh, and, and then you can share it probably to, to the audience uh, through the, uh, the TALC uh, website. I think this is the most convenient. It's very easy to find in, uh, on internet otherwise, I mean. Okay, uh, second uh, question, uh, how to participate to the data space uh, business committee sessions? Well, I think this is great that uh, as many people can contribute to this data space business committee sessions because uh, we can concretely share experience and the best practices. So the, the, I will, uh, uh, we will share the, the name of the person who is organizing these data spaces. Her name is Alessandra Perna, and you can send uh, an email to her and she will drive you to the right data space uh, if you want to contribute. Thank you very much, Dominique. Um, another question that has just uh, come up from uh, DSPC's experiences, and uh, obviously your professional view and your current role, uh, which are the most important Gaia-X standards uh, that spaces need to be complied with? Um, well, that's a, that's a tricky question. It is, <laughs> but we like for transparency reasons, uh, we need to be open here, uh, open ecosystem, fully transparent. Uh, we take all the questions as long as uh, the questions are directed to us and uh, we're able to respond as open and transparent, transparently as we can, obviously, and then we increase the knowledge and understanding yeah, of the of overall course. ecosystem. So I think you are the best person to, to uh, in fact, respond to such a question. Thank you so much. Uh, I would say that the transparency and the interoperability is a very important, uh, a very important aspect so to, to uh, foster the, the the use of data and the trust as well. Um, so I don't know if it answers, it, uh, it answers the question. 
but uh, I think that's uh, really the basic, uh, uh, the starting point to to uh, allow uh, a trust uh, exchange, trusted exchanges of data within data spaces. Wonderful. So um, another question that has just come up. Um, there is an interest in the Omega X energy data space and uh, they are wondering where they can find more information on this specifically on how it can apply to um, their user cases. Uh, yes, so they can contact Martine Courrier. We will share her um, uh, mail. She's the lead of this uh, data spaces and she will be delighted to, to onboard a new member certainly. That's very interesting. Thank you very much. I think uh, Dominic has a, a question to address. Uh, Dominic. Thank you so much, Dominique. Um, I would like to reformulate my standard question. Since you already, with this broadness, you showed us healthcare, you showed us agriculture, uh, many different domains, I would like to extend my, my base question. How can we come from use cases to real business cases with a pan-European perspective. I realize when listening to this day today, there is no more national single use case doing a small thing in a the corner. They are all pan-European. And I expect them in the summit of next year, in one year from now, I would say they are global. And as we just heard also from Catena X, they are also having this ambition of a global outreach. So. Is what is your perspective with, the, with this international, pan-European perspective of all these use cases that you presented? Just the last one that you showed, um, this uh, Upro Gigant is already international. Just as one example, um, what are your thoughts? Is, is this really the way uh, how we can succeed, succeed this pan-European and international perspective? Yes, obviously, I think that uh, we need to leverage on the European aspect to get uh, the most of the ben most of the benefits. And um, well, uh, you probably saw that I uh, tried to uh, size uh, as much as I could the impacts uh, in my presentation by explaining, for example, that we have uh, at European level uh, uh, so something such as 750 million euro uh, savings in labor cost uh, in case of uh, better management for disruption of trains. So that illustrates for me that there is a, a potential to create value. And uh, the last uh, uh, slide in my presentation is really to find ways to create value through, uh, and, and because this is not obvious, in fact, to uh, to see how we can generate value and convert it in, in financial or uh, uh, some as specific value for for the cit European citizen, and I have tried uh, in my presentation to 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 show that there is a lot of value which can be created by these uh, more efficient uh, processes by the uh, data sharing uh, in each of the domains that I have displayed. So, um, so well, this is my answer to you, Dominique. Um, maybe we can have a look to the um, uh, to the uh, survey. Uh, I could not uh, see the final outcome of the survey. If we can go back to the survey, is it possible? Okay. okay so we see that uh, the the first uh, uh, way to create value is really to improve internal processes thanks to better data availability and quality. And I think that this is important because sometimes people believe that it's just through selling data that you can create value. And in fact, we saw not only with the cases I showed uh, in my presentation, but with all the other cases in the Catena X uh, cases and uh, uh, with, uh, with the other cases that in fact, uh, this is uh, the, the maybe the easiest way and the most obvious way to, to create value. And then we can see that uh, contribution to EU strategy uh, for common, the creation of common good is also something which is uh, uh, quite representative of the value creation uh, process. So, well, I think it was interesting to have this, um, this survey. Thank you very much to, uh, to participate to this. And uh, thank you very much to give me the opportunity to present the, these uh, use cases. 
Thank you very much, Dominique. It has been such a pleasure to have you here with us. Warm applause. We definitely need experts like you to increase you. the knowledge sharing. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Thank you.